What's happening YouTube? I'm Paul, this is Spencer, we are Maymount Media, and today we're gonna to be talking about our on-location video setup. All right guys, so as we mentioned, today we're gonna to be talking about our on-location video setup. For those of you who don't know, we are Fujifilm X-T3 shooters. This is uh, one of our rigs, the other one is obviously filming right now. If you have any questions about uh, this rig, check out the video linked above. And uh, we have a whole big long video describing uh, that rig, but today we're gonna be talking about the rest of the stuff we bring on the shoot, so let's dive in. All right guys, so we spent a lot of time trying to streamline our process and get it to a point where we can pretty much make one trip to and from the car uh, when we show up to do a video shoot. So as of right now, we each carry one rig in one hand, we carry a backpack on our back, and then we roll one big case, uh, one with lights and one with stands. So we'll start with my backpack. This is the uh, Low Pro Whistler 350, and uh, great backpack, highly recommend it, great weather ceiling, good straps, uh, all that good stuff. Um, but this one is uh, pretty specifically devoted to sound equipment. Um, so real quick in the front, uh, I've got extra straps, camera strap, and an umbrella, important stuff. This generously large top pouch here is where you keep the uh, rain guard. Uh, and then I also keep all of our like small cords that go on my rig. Um, I've got my ND filter. I've got the X-Rite color checker for doing white balance and, uh, and then a few little tools and accessories in there as well. In the primary compartment, we have uh, a lot of batteries. So for those who don't know, we use uh, V-mount batteries. These power the rig, so we keep a couple spares. We keep extra X-T3 batteries, and we keep some Sony batteries, the MPF batteries for uh, running monitors and uh, external recorders. We run the uh, Rode NT5. This is our indoor dialogue mic for a boom. Uh, keep some gaff tape in there, spare. Um, when monitoring audio, I use the Sennheiser HD360 over your headphones. Always good to have a good pair of headphones. Um, I do also keep a second super cheapo iPhone headphones just in case. Always be good to be able to monitor your audio. Speaking of audio, we have the Zoom H4n Pro recorder in here. Um, then we generally keep two uh, pocket recorders with labs attached, which is currently what we're using here. These are the Zoom H1. Um, they don't make these anymore. They have the H1 Pro now, but uh, good little pocket recorder. Can record for hours and hours on one AA battery and good sound quality. Um, and then right down the middle, I have my art, my interview lens. This is the uh, Canon 70 to 200 with the Fringer EF to FX adapter. This is the Pro Mark I. They make the Mark II now, which apparently is even faster, but uh, gives you full aperture control and uh, autofocus and stabilization and all that good stuff. So this is for pretty much just when we shoot interviews. Um, and then the rest of the time we shoot other stuff, so. So Paul dedicates most of his bag to sound. Uh, most of my bag is lenses. I have this Degain bag. This is a little uh, weather cover for it. Uh, I'll link to a similar Degain bag in the uh, description below. I don't think they make this version anymore. It's pretty old. But uh, in here I have, uh, I like to have a photo camera with me. This is the Canon 5D4 with the 24-105 f4. Stabilized on the Fuji, it's like a 35 to 150. So that's a great video lens for us to have in the bag, uh, along with those Fringer adapters. Uh, that's generally in this bag too, but that's currently on the 18 to 35 Sigma on this on the Fuji. Uh, I also have my 7200 f2.8. Uh, I have the SLR 25 1.5 in here. Paul's got the 50 1.2 on his camera. Uh, we've been using these a lot, uh, shooting one wide, one tight for a lot of run and gun scenarios, and it's been awesome. Uh, I have the Fuji 18 to 55 in here. This is just the kit lens that comes with uh, a lot of the Fuji cameras these days. It's stabilized. Uh, this on the uh, Ronin S is a fantastic combo. We shoot that a lot. Uh, and then just for extra backups and for some photo purposes, the 16 to 35 F2.8. Uh, is also in here. I have a couple accessories, uh, 
uh, 82 and 77 millimeter polarizers. I have a B&W and D filter, uh, a step up ring to go with that. Um, and then I have the Pelican SD case, just a couple spare SDs in here and a blower and a lens wipe. And that's it in my case. Uh, and then this is uh, the green box, aptly named since it's a green box. This is the Pelican 1520. This is just pretty much spare parts. It lives in the car. Um, sometimes we bring it in if we know we need something, but for the most part, this is just uh, a quick way to keep all of our spare parts. All right, so as you can see, pretty well loaded up. Uh, we've got my uh, Sigma 24 to 105 F4 stabilized. Again, good video lens and just good to have around because it uh, gets just about everything done. Um, we have a, a spare dummy adapter. As you know, we have a lot of Canon glass that we use, so always need to make sure you can attach that Canon glass to a, uh, to a Fuji body. Um, extra mic holders. We've got a uh, backup backup mic. This is the Rode Video Micro. Then we also have uh, the Rode Video Mic Pro as a backup shotgun mic. Um, we've used it as a boom mic before, and it's actually not so bad, so keep that in mind. Um, extra batteries for the Rode Video Mic Pro because uh, these aren't always easy to come by. And then in here we just have a whole stack of cords, um, you know, just everything from spare XLR cords to, uh, to, you know, RCA cords and everything you might need to be able to like plug into a sound deck at an event or something like that. Um, then to go with those, we have an extra pocket recorder. This is the Roland R05. Good recorder, it's just a little bigger than the Zooms, so we don't usually use that for lav. Um, Extra SD case with just a few spares, uh, extra polarizer, which we never use, and then uh, just a whole bunch of extra cords and hardware and all that good stuff. Uh, extra monitor mount, extra DTAP, you know, um, Allen keys, all that good stuff. This is the last piece here. This is uh, a one extra spare microphone. This is the, uh, the Audio-Technica AT875R. It requires phantom power, so honestly, it probably wouldn't come in handy too often, but it's just nice to have lots of extra microphones because sound is super important, and we do use this uh, wind muff very often on our Sennheiser 600s. Extra set of rails for the small rigs just in case we ever needed to downsize, and, uh, and that's pretty much everything we keep in the spare case. All right, this is our light box. This is a super awesome case. It is the Pelican 1650 case. Uh, I've had it for about 10 years now. It's traveled a lot. It's been uh, through a lot of different phases with uh, you know different fitting foam and so forth. Right now we have no outfitting in it and we just use it for storage and transport. It's got four wheels and uh, an extendable handle for wheeling it just like a suitcase. So super awesome, Hel handles the weight really well. Uh, right on top, we have our reflector kits. Uh, so this is the Westcott Illuminator series. This We have a bunch of them. We have the 30 inch, the 42 inch, and then this is the 52 inch series. Um, it's got everything that you could possibly need for a shoot in here. Um, it's got a one stop diffusion, white diffusion panel. It's got a two stop white diffusion panel and then a zipper cover for that, which one side is black, one side is gold. And then if you turn that inside out, there's also silver and zebra. So. Uh, this is just a little one by one pop up softbox uh, defuse. This was an Amazon item. Uh, we use this for our key light to diffuse our key light sometimes. Great little pop up item. Not super rugged, but really helpful uh, in a pinch and actually even not in a pinch. We use this all the time. Yeah. Yeah. It's nice because it's only a half stop diffusion panel over the front, so you don't lose a lot of power from your light. Uh, on top here, we also have some audio cords. So this is uh, just your standard XLR cord. We have a 25 and a 30 footer, um, and then you can obviously link them up if you need to, but generally we use Copal cords, super good sound quality, not a lot of noise, rugged as hell. Uh, we have these Niwar, Niwar uh, bicolor uh, LED panels. These are the NL660s. Um, they come with barn doors, they come with the yoke. Uh, they fit uh, two uh, NPF batteries, uh, or you plug in a DC 12 volt into here. Um, these are great little lights, uh, not really powerful enough for a key light, but awesome background, rim, uh, fill, whatever you need. These are awesome, great little lights. 
We have two of them, by two the way. Two of them, and they're bicolor adjustable, which is sweet. All right, some of our other smaller lights, we keep these light wands. These are the YN360 light wands. Uh, they come in a nice little bag, and then they are... Um, Yeah, so they're bicolor adjustable as well as full RGB. So really nice for backgrounds and rims and fills and just like a little pop of color on a flat surface or something like that. They take a uh, Sony MPF battery as well, but it does not come included. So make sure you keep an eye out for that if you're purchasing. Um, just really simple user interface, rugged as hell, and they come with a little color gel that snaps on as well. So super worth the like $75 that they, yeah. that they cost. Uh, we use these for weddings very often, uh, and we have two of them. Uh, next thing in here is this Aure boom pole. It's uh, carbon fiber. We got the twist locks on here. Uh, plug XLR plugs it right into the back of this thing, so you don't have to run a cable all the way up. Uh, this has been a fairly recent purchase, and we're in love with it. It's perfect. Really nice quality sound. It's got good cord built into it, which is important. This little bag here is an old tripod bag that we have filled with um, the Westcott Illuminator Arm Series. So uh, for those of you who are wondering how we set up like flags or anything like that, we use this series here. They're little clamps and then they go onto a little boom pole that extends to be really big and quite rugged. So this pops onto the top of the light stand, boom pole goes through there, then you slide these suckers on and these little clamps can either attach to the, like, the Illuminator um, reflectors or you know we even use these to like prop up sound blankets and things like that sometimes so we have uh, three of these and really helpful uh we have just a bunch of assorted uh extension cords and surge protectors and gaff and 12 volt power supply for the wands and uh short and long extension cords we got it all in here uh everything we could possibly need and then the last thing in here is uh it's sort of a case within a case this is the genera uh, this is our key light. It's the, let me make sure I get this right. So it is the Genere Spectro LED Studio 1200 bicolor light. So it's 1200 LEDs in a one by one pattern and they are bicolor. So you can fully adjust from 3200 to 5600. Barn doors come uh, included. They're removable pretty easily. Um, and then they have the reflective surface and that slides off if you want uh, the black barn doors as well. This has been a really awesome light. It's super powerful and works really well. Uh, on the back of it, it fits a V-mount battery if you want to power it that way, which we have very often if you don't have power. Uh, a 95 watt hour V-mount lasts, I think we tested, no, it was like, I think it was over an hour um, uh, for the 95 watt hour. So if you have a bigger one, um, you can get even more power. But the thing we love most about this is the power bank. Uh, it has a V-mount on the back of it and you slides right in and it just clicks onto that light and then this plugs in to the display and then there's one cord running out uh, into uh, power. So And the cord that they give you, big props to generate, is actually really long. A lot of these lights, you're just like mandatory with an extension cord, but... Yeah, so that's our light box. All right, cool. So the last thing that we have is our light stands. So for a long time, these were like the bane of our video existence. We just like couldn't figure out how to transport a lot of case, a lot of uh, light stands easily. None of the cases we found really worked for us. And then we finally found this one. Highly recommend it. It's made by SKB. It is not cheap and it was worth every penny we spent on it. So highly recommend this one. We'll link to the description in the description uh, to this case down below. But it has wheels on one side so you can drag it, which is just perfect. And uh, I think the biggest, uh, the, the biggest must for a light stand case for us was it needed to be able to fit C stands and then be strong enough to hold them up. Um, so if you take the bases off your C stand, this guy is big enough for a C stand with a grip head on top of it, um, which was just huge for us. So um, we have one or sometimes two uh, impact uh, the turtle style C stands. And uh, yeah, I think these are the 12 foot. And then on top of here, we have a grip head with the Aure boom pole holder. This is what we use to boom our audio. Uh, and then we have invested in two of these 
uh, impact heavy duty stands. Uh, these can hold any of our lights. It could hold our boom pole uh, if need be. Uh, backdrop, these are, I think, eight footers, right? They're taller than that. They're nine or ten. They're maybe nine or ten footers, but these, they're super lightweight, super sturdy, awesome purchase. Going along with those, we have some smaller light stands. These are like nine foot aluminum Westcott's. These are pretty cheap stands. We bought them like six years ago for weddings to hold flashes. And uh, we have since used them for all kinds of purposes and they have traveled a lot and they're really holding up to the test of time. So highly recommend these guys for small light stands. Uh, we have these old photo tripods. Uh, we used to shoot all our uh, landscape photography on these. These are the slick. Pro 340DX legs with a Obin BA113 uh, ball head on the top. Uh, we use these mostly for our light wands uh, as a background or a little rim light. Um, we keep the plates right on the lights and then just click them right on here, so. Nice and adjustable. Uh, the other thing we have in here are uh, going along with those uh, Westcott, the Illuminator series we're talking about, like the boom, for uh, holding flags or reflectors or diffusion or whatever. Uh, this is part of that kit. So these extend extremely long. And then again, uh, with the clamps that were in our light box, you prop these on top of any of these stands and you can attach uh, any of those reflectors or we use these for sound blankets as well, things like that. Uh, got a couple little safety tennis balls in here. Make sure your balls are safe at all times. Uh, these uh, just slip right onto the bottom of C-stands or the heavy-duty stands uh, if you have a nice floor you're working on and don't want to scratch up any of that. So so those we found on Amazon, super cheap. They are pre-cut. If you do buy your own tennis balls and cut them, be super careful that you don't stab your own hand. Um, and then also we have uh, from Impact, there's a couple more grip heads in here and uh, boom with a grip head and pin attached. So. Uh, those are the final things and a couple spare clamps. These always come in handy. Go to the hardware store and these are like, these little alligator clamps are like $5 and then these are a little more expensive but little quick grip, vice grips. These things are super nice. You never know when you're gonna need them and I can't even right now think of a purpose but like there's always a need for extra clamps. Yeah. So. Uh, and then we don't, Generally keep, maybe we'll put one or two in the case if, if, if it's feeling uh, pretty light, but just sandbags, we have these in the car. We'll bring, I think we have six total, but we don't usually use more than three or four. Uh, but um, yeah, safety first. We Safe lay these things down in the car and use them to hold our cameras in place. Um, though we are working on a new concept to uh, to clip our cameras in place in the car. So we'll update you if that ever happens. But for now, those are what we rest our cameras on, our rigs on in the car, and also uh, venues and insurance companies love sandbags. So keep them around. Uh, so I hope you guys found this helpful or informative or both. Um, we really are, like our kit is ever evolving. So if you guys have any good ideas, uh, shoot them at us down below in the comments section. If you liked this video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more content from us, click that subscribe button. Um, we know that things are a little crazy right now with the coronavirus, and we hope everybody out there is safe and happy and healthy. And uh, we're, you're probably about as desperate for content as we are, so we're going to be trying to pump out as many videos as we can in the next few weeks, but we are going to try to also just stick to our regular schedule um, and then maybe just put in some extra stuff on top of that. So this is week three of March, which means that this one was video centric. Um, next week, you can keep an eye out for uh, some updates with uh, just gear and equipment. And then, um, and then it'll be April and hopefully things are starting to get back to a little sense of normalcy at that point. So again, thanks for watching. We really appreciate the support, you guys. Um, do all the YouTube stuff down below. I'm Paul, that's Spencer, and we're Main Mount Media. We'll see you next time.